Hey guys, it's EJ again, and uh, after this first week, we're waiting for the servers to come up, but after this first week of playing, um, I, I'm coming out with a comp guide to what I think is good for us. The meta is pretty melee heavy, or melee caster heavy, so comps that you have to run as a Shadow Priest are pretty important. I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry that. Um, so I'm, I have three Shadow Priests I've been running. Got them all to 18, 1900 ish with pretty good win ratios. Uh, one's like 85%. Um, so I have been playing different comps in every one of them too. Like each Shadow Priest, I'm running a different comp. And I feel like I have a good idea of what's good for the meta. And uh, hopefully this helps you guys out on what to choose. I'm going to give you the top five that I think will be easiest for you guys to push on. Um, based on the meta, not just what's a good comp, but what's the meta and what I think the average player can play. It's not a rank one comp guide because if you're a rank one player, you know what to run. You don't need my advice. This is just, again, most of my guides are going to be on the average player to push. Like what you can push to get 2400, get your glad. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into this. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with scatter play. So scatter play uh is hunter shadow priest healer and i feel like the two healers you want to run are either r shammy or prez evoker uh the reason r shammy it, it can bring cc to the table with a with a hex dr right um i know we have scatter trap and all that but you can use it on an off target so if you're fighting thug cleave or you're fighting uh ret war or you're fighting um cupid a lot of the time you can just cc the uh the ret out of the, the scenario if you're not going him with the the uh the shaman on your team also the static build totems to peel for you guys is really good wind shears are really good against casters you, you're very oppressive with the shaman variant and i think survival hunter is the best of the two personally um but that's my opinion you can uh you can play marksman also i just think survival does a lot of freaking damn and the cc chains are very long all right, you have, you have scatter for you have trap, you have stun, you have fear, you have silence, then you can hex the off target root, static totem, wind shear. You have a lot you can do. Um, if you want more damage on the on the team, you play with the preservation evoker, right? The preservation evoker does a lot of damage, can almost do as much as you guys if you're if you're very offensive, and they have a lot of good utility and, and healing involved. Uh AoE stuns help a lot too to to peel or just for a go. So um yeah, depending on how you want to play, either more defensive and utility or more damage is going to be based on your healer. So scatter play, I feel, is very good. And also, it's not hard to play, right? It, it just goes around your 3-2-1, right? And you do your go. So not that hard to play at all. I think it's easier for people to push with than some of the other comps. Number four, a little bit more of a um, setup-oriented comp, but also it's very, like, zuggy. And that's WPX. So playing with the Fury Warrior, I know they're getting nerfed today, but even still, Fury Warrior does insane damage. Uh, you can swap targets very easily because of their mobility and the MS they can bring to the table helps a lot. And so I think WPX is very good. Also because since Fury does so much oppression, people have to peel, peel the Fury Warrior a lot of time, which gives you some breathing room on your... Um, your shadow priest but also a lot of the time you can have your warrior sit a healer so they're not getting cleaved versus these cleavy metas and you just put all your damage into the healer while cleaving the P the dps that are on you so if you're fighting ret war x or you're fighting uh let's say the walking dead you can shadow crash the death knight and the wind walker or the ret and the warrior or whatever and you can have your warrior just sit on the healer and then you just Fear the ret, fear the whatever, fear the windwalker, fear the whatever, and hit the healer. And uh, when the healer uses cooldowns, you can swap to the DPS. And that's just how Fury does so much damage, it's able to do that. I think with a preservation evoker, it's best because you get a lot more oppression out of it. You get a lot more damage. And if you have a lot of damage, people are on the defense, which allows Shadow Priest to actually cast. So I think preservation evoker is best for that. They also have the best heals. Um, but in this comp, you will see your uh, Evoker go oom. Your Evoker does go oom in WPX compared to playing like double caster or whatever. So 
if you don't want to play oppressive and you want again more utility i think the shaman is the better variant for that you know with the roots the statics uh the wind shears they can bring a, a little extra damage but it's, it's not really for that and they have a better mana pool um so again your your healers are going to depend on how your play style is but i think wpx is very strong right now Number three, God Comp. We, we all knew Frost Mage was broken. Shadow Priest had good utility. I think God Comp is insane right now if you're playing with a, a really good Frost Mage. And in this comp, you're not really pawling all that much. You're tr pretty much trying to do spread pressure as if you're playing uh, MLX. So you're spreading pressure to people, the Frost Mages. And then you're only really pawling on your go or to peel. And I think the Arjude is good for that reason, right? The Arjude can Cyclone and stop heals, but also can stop pressure. You also get the roots on off targets that the, the mage isn't rooting. But that's, again, that's not the biggest issue. The biggest thing here is just that you can do a lot of pressure, your healer can go for drinks, you can win on mana, and you can just, you can actually go into dampening with this comp, which should allow you to win. Um, the shaman variant of this is just good into casters. So if you're playing god comp, shaman's very good to other casters. So you can, you can run down other caster comps, so. I would say you pick one of those two. I don't personally like Preservation Evoker in this comp uh, because a lot of time you're kind of staying away from each other and you're forcing your Prez to bounce around a lot. And I, I feel like that could be an issue with mid-tier players or players who are trying to just push. I think if you play more either defensive or utility and, and go for drinks, it's safer while you're trying to push. So you could play with the Prez. I just, I, I wouldn't. All right. FPX. I think FPX is our number two comp. The reason I say that is Feral does a lot of damage. It has a lot of CC. Uh, it can cleave very well, but also they're pretty squishy, and a lot of the time they're the target. So this is very good for a Shadow Priest. For us specifically, this comp allows us to free cast because a lot of people go the Feral. Most comps go the Feral, and so you get the free cast a lot of the time. So your pressure is at least out there. And uh, you can do substantial amount of goes with this comp. I think you have to play with the Prez Evoker. I think the extra damage is needed um, to push people over the edge, to play defensive, which allows your comp to, to be hyper aggressive. And uh, also the recovery tools are very quick on a Preservation Evoker. And for two squishy-ish classes, um, yeah, people might say Shadow Priest is tanky, but you know, you look at how the game rolls with no mobility, Mobility equals tankiness, right? Mages might get hit by X, Y, or Z, but they have a million ports. They heal off those ports. Their shields are one million. They're hard to hit. That equals tankiness, right? Um, Shadow Priest just gets, by these melee thieves, we we're just getting ran over, right? So we're technically not that tanky in this meta, I would say. Um, now, that being said, all these comps I have been mentioning, I play Voidweaver most of my games. Most of them. I know that's like everyone wants to play Archon, but Archon was good on the beta. Archon is good in solo shuffle. Um, in threes, n about 90% of the time I'm the target and it's a melee meta and everyone just tries, tries to kick you and shuts you down. But when you're playing 30 second go Void Weaver and you're playing Void Leech, if you've been in the stream, you'll see I average 11, 15 million, sometimes 20 million healing off my Void Leech. Passive healing, I'm very tanky in that regard. I get to go do a go every 30 seconds, which does really good damage. My dots do insane damage in Void Weaver. Um, I think Void Weaver is what we should be playing most games. Um, now, Archon, if you can free cast in a double caster build, it's very good. But a lot of the games, you're fighting Aphilox, you're fighting X, Y, or Z, things that are tanky. And you need to outlive them. And if you play either Void Leech for the melee meta, or you play the Shadow Absorption heal for fighting Aphilox and Shadow Priest, you outlive them instead of trying to do damage. And then you're also your Void damage is insane with your Rifts if when you're single targeting other casters uh, that don't have mobility. Like if you play against Shadow play versus a Shadow play, I should say, you're gonna hit that target, right? You just tick the target that you can just cleave on. Um, but yeah, like I, I think Void Weaver is insane when it comes to this meta. Uh, I think it needs buffs. I don't think it's like. I just think the fact that you can live so long is what makes it good. The damage is not as good as Archon, but I also feel like Archon's too easy to shut down. And I feel like a lot of Shadow Priests are realizing that. That you pop your 
three casts and then people just pop a wall and then outside that one minute go you don't do damage and out if you're not running um driven to madness you have a two minute big burst because your big burst actually comes from going into void form with that 30 percent increased damage or is it 30 30 percent i think all something 20 percent, 30 percent, something like that anyway that damage um paired with the increased mind flay and all that that comes from being in void form so you don't get big goes really until every two minutes and a decent go every one minute and everyone just trades it and i feel like you don't get the kill as often as we would like in actual threes as archon uh but in void weaver i've had extremely good success like i said my win rates are really really good um and i've been mainly using void weaver people keep asking me oh is it better i think it's better for the meta and threes but i think the archon free casting is stronger um but you have to be able to free cast and you just can't i don't feel like in this meta so that's my opinion and i'm just saying i think you should play void weaver in almost all the comps um Depending on what you're tuned into, you can play Archon, which I play Archon if I'm fighting other casters. If I'm fighting like Ellie Mage or, you know, I'm, I'm generally playing Archon into that. So you do got to pick and choose based on what you're tuned into. Anyways, back to the list. FPX, really good. I think you only should play it with the Prez. All right. Next, I think we all know what, what the next one is. It's no surprise. Shadow Play, I think everyone knew was going to be the best comp for Shadow Priest. Um, Affy locks do the most insane damage. They are getting nerfed today, but again, they're getting like a 20% nerf on their Shadow Bolt. 20% of an average of 1.3 million, right? Let's say that's like 250,000, so they're still going to hit just under a million Shadow Bolts, but they're getting their UA buff and the Dispel buff. They're going to do insane damage, guys. They're still going to do insane damage. I think UA lock is going to be crazy. Um, and then also Destro got buffed. So you could play Destro or Affy S play. And it's going to be insane. I think it's just the best comp we can play. It does get stopped by certain comps like the Walking Dead. Um, Feral. Or, or not even say Feral. But like Rogue X is pretty good into us. Feral could be. If they, can, if they don't die in the opener, we pretty much win. Uh, if we don't die in the opener, we pretty much win. But Shadow Play I think is our best overall comp also easier than most other comps when it comes to learning um the comp but then surviving is how you're going to excel learning how to pour as a warlock learning how to peel as a shadow priest that's what's going to push you into that um, higher cr bracket i think arjude is the best healer for this personally i think the pressure is really good they're always going to be able to go drink if you when you're starting to do your burst but also they can peel very good for us they can cyclone and root targets off of us and we have to live into dampening which is when we win um shaman's a good variant into other casters running the shaman the disruption you can run other caster comps down and if you really really want to just be oppressive you can play with a preservation evoker um it, it's all going to come down to your play style and how you guys want to play your comp i think any three are going to be good i just think druid's the best um for this specific comp but again you might queue into something and shaman might feel better you might queue into something and then druid might feel better right you're always going to find a matchup where one of the healers is what you wish you had so just keep that in mind i just think shadow play is our best bet right now um now shadow play speaking of what i was talking about uh, even in shadow play i generally run void weaver um for the, the spread pressure cleave with our dots but there are plenty of times we're fighting double caster or um x caster like melee caster where i don't i'm never the target and i go archon right again it's going to be based on what you queue into what spec you're going to run but a lot of the time in almost every comp i am running void weaver and so i think you'll see a lot more people running void weaver for that also the fact is that if a shadow priest can outlive we're generally going to win in dampening and i think void weaver brings us to the point of winning most of our matches i think archon's very good when you're in the 1800 bracket going to 2k 2100 where you're going to get the one shots off but good players will just play around it. And I think you need more pressure. And 30 second goes feels good. I'll come out with different. I'm going to come out with a, a build guide and other stuff in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that's that. So some honorable mentions. Okay. So just some honorable mentions are Shadow Cleave 2.0, you know, Unholy Death Knight, Shadow Priest, Shaman, or Preservation Evoker, I think are the, the healers. I am actually playing that comp right now with my brother 
My brother has come back to the game after a long hiatus, and we are playing this exact comp, and we are 18-something. They're 1900. We got them to 1900. Um, and there goes the baby talking, trying to say hi. She said hi. Um, but yeah, so we're we're with new players. We are at about we're at two k almost twenty one hundred MMR with with Shadow Cleave, and they're at nineteen hundred, and my guys at eighteen hundred. So, um, it, it's definitely a viable, and a, it's a pretty good comp. I just don't think it's user friendly. I think there's a lot of mistakes that can happen, and you could die. And so I don't recommend it as one of the top five, but it is an honorable mention, and I think you could definitely run it. So keep that in mind. RPS is another honorable mention with Assassination Rogue, but again, it's not user friendly, right? It really heavily relies on a good rogue and any DRs or any mishaps, you lose the game. So I don't like recommending RPS, especially when rogues also die in this meta with a lot of heavy melee. Uh, they're very easily tab targeted, but if you do play it, I think you should play it with a Shaman or the Hex DRs. Um, you could play with the Preservation Evoker also. But that's what I that's those. Um, I have played some other comps uh, yesterday on stream. I played Devastation Evoker, Shadow Priest, Ardruid, and we went like ten and one at two K MMR. So you could play that also. But I, I again, you can definitely mess up and die in that comp. So I would say stick to the five the five that I mentioned, and these two are honorable mentions. But there are obviously other comps you guys can run. You might have success with. Anyone can have success with a comp. It really, a lot of it comes down to, to synergy. But um, I think if you want to push rating, one of those five comps would be your best bet. But on that note, I'm going to stop rambling. Yet You guys know I ramble. So come follow me at twitch.tv slash EJRSP. We are grinding. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Leave a like and a comment down below and what videos you would like to see from me. All right, guys. Peace.